na sampling. Nagsasample rin yung listahanan, pero basically, as you said, it's derived from the ground. Then how come the administration does not use the 30% figure of uh, DSWT? The more accurate figure. Kaya yung plano niya sa 2028, by the time the president exits, 9% na lang daw, single digit na daw ang poverty incidence rate, kawawa naman kung hindi talaga ma-achieve because he assumed 2018 or 22% ng assumption. I'm getting the MTFF assumptions, Mr. President. So on. Paiba-iba. So, eto nga. Kawawa kasi Presidente rin, Mr. Presidente. Uh, sa zona niya, he mentions figures eh. Yes, pati 18% yung, pat, pati, nga. Pati, pati unemployment rate. Kine, nakikwestiyon natin, tinanong natin ang doli. Mali-mali din ang mga figures. So, so ito, kung sabihin ng Presidente, poverty incidence rate will be down to 9% at the end of his term. Yun ang sabi. That's, but, uh, that's, yes. uh, oh, but the, that's starting, the goal. The starting point is 22%. If, if the DSWD figures are to be believed, Mali! It should be laid out for us the, the uh, differences between NEP 2024, the House Bill, and the Senate Committee Report Budget Levels, especially for the Office of the uh, Secretary. Dun po yung, dun po yung uh, malalaking changes eh. But admittedly, even the Senate committee level for the office of the secretary is higher than what the executive proposed, uh, Mr. President, by, if I'm not mistaken, 32 billion. 32 or, billion, yes. Yes, 32 billion. Yeah. So, come. Uh, this uh, constitutes uh, the 33.312 uh, billion constitutes the uh, house increases. Well, again, again, uh, Mr. President, 32, yung committee report po natin increases the NEP by 32 billion. The house version more than our increases. So, so sige nga, uh, dun did we retain the proposed house increases? Yes. No. Not in totality. In the meantime, we retained, but there's also a significant reduction uh, in the Senate version. Around 1 billion? One, uh, yes, not around quite. Uh, 800 million. Okay. Around eight, uh, 800 million. Uh, what, what pups were affected by our reduction? Compared to, uh, compared to the GAB. I think uh, the reduction involves the four Ps, uh, amount, amount. those who have graduated, and uh, also uh, different uh, projects such as uh, the reduction in the sustainable livelihood, uh, I believe, as it has already been encompassed by other projects. The sustainable livelihood program is meant, uh, ito po, uh, yun mga understanding, is meant to be the uh, follow-up program for those who have improved their life circumstances under the Four Peace program. Tama po ba yun? Parang graduated yun, di ba? You, from Four Peace, you, have, you now go to SLP? Yes, that's correct. But uh, the SLP, um, is also uh, also involves other uh, projects in the Kalahi Seeds and others. Yun. So I think there's an effort to streamline and simplify this livelihood project. The magic words have been uh, mentioned, uh, Mr. President. That's why uh, if uh, SLP uh, contains the Kalahi Seeds, that's why I fail to understand what SLP is all about because I really do not understand what Kalahi seeds. So, siguro, we will, we will devote time, siguro, Mr. President, uh, para maintindihan po natin, no? Okay. Okay. Kalahi seeds is what? A program of the DSWD? 
Yes, uh, the Kalahi Seeds, as we know, is Kaunlaran at Kabuhayan sa Barangay KKB. And uh, this was a program uh, that started in the early 2000s. Uh, first, it was foreign funded. As we recall, uh, there were uh, uh, um, OSAID grants uh, derived mm. by then Secretary Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. So, matagal na matagal na to, mga yeah. tira tira na to. Yung iba rito, eh, nang galing sa foreign funded sa World Bank. Ngayon, mm. nag-a-apply na naman sa ADB. Mm. Yung iba naman, totally locally funded. So, among the modalities, yung kauna-unahan, eh, yung community-driven development. So, there's a 500 million here na binibigay sa LGU to choose kung ano yung gusto nila. Whether it's an artesian well or uh, a, a farm-to-market road, uh, bahala yung LGU. So, isa yung ganon. And then, uh, there's also the pag-abot the Pag-Abot uh, project, which is a reach-out project for street dwellers, which is also affiliated with another project of one of our uh, colleagues, and that's the Balik Probinsya. Pag-alis pag nila sa mga lansangan, dadalhin sila sa probinsya. So that's back-to-back, -back, Pag-Abot at saka Balik Probinsya. Pagkatapos nito, meron tayong iba't ibang cash for work which is derived from the 2022 APRO, yung na-extend natin dahil sa COVID, yung cash for work. Ito na naman yung mga uh, persons with disabilities, uh, may 300 million for the graduates and college students who are unable to find work post-pandemic, may 1 billion dyan. And then there's a new pilot project called the Tarabasa Tutoring Program, which endows the tutor for a 20-day period, two hours a day, uh, with uh, a, a budget of 900 million. Hindi pa tayo natatapos dyan. <laughs> Maliban pa dyan sa mga community-driven, meron pa yung projects nila sa former conflict areas. Eto na si Pamana. And uh, yung Pamana projects, they're all limited to the areas that were formerly um, insurgency-afflicted. Uh, Tapos, may local... Pro uh, that's a local project. Finally, there is a PMNP. Ito naman, foreign-funded Philippine Multisectoral Nutrition Project. Kasama na naman dyan yung supplemental feeding, pero ito yung foreign component. So, labu-labu so, po ito. <laughs> kaya nga, parang nakita ko na parang the, the program uh, wants to be a mini-government uh, but ang main ano niya, main function is to extend assistance nila basta iba-iba kahit anong problema pero so if this is a program uh sige nga uh, how long has this been a program of the DSWD Wag na muna natin pag-usapan yung components of the program, but as a program. I believe that uh, this has been going on for over 20 years because I recall that uh, can, we have the, can we have the year? I think the DSWD should know the year. 2003. So this is a 20-year program, and in 2017, the minority leader himself uh, initially proposed the Kalahi KKB. Uh, I believe that seems to be on record as one of your uh, initiatives, Bob. <laughs> well, I, I think I will disown that, uh, <laughs> that, that initiative. I, I have no idea, I, I have no recollection, Mr. President, that I have understood this Kalahi program, so I would not have, uh, I would not have uh, proposed that, Mr. I President. I believe it has morphed since uh, the time you initially proposed it <laughs> okay. as a community development program. If it's... Uh, uh, is this program intended to have a uh, natural uh, lifespan? Is this program to expire in the future? Yes, um, if uh, we notice the World Bank foreign funded infra component, uh, the infra component will already expand by the end of 2024, December. So, yun patapos na yun. Yung OSAID is long gone. I think there's an application for additional funding with the ADB naman, and this is for more additional community driven development programs. So, may natatapos naman po. Hindi, pero since we are, 
meron pa tayo ADB application, we don't intend it to end uh, in the near future, bale. Yeah, we're extending the program. We're borrowing pa ADB. Yun po. These are exploratory talks. There's nothing oh, oh. firm yet. Yes. But uh, the effects, uh, the intention of this community-driven development program, na humihingi sila ng additional funding, was to respond to the effects of COVID and the continuing disasters in its wake. So, yung mga uh, far-flung provincial communities ang ina-address niyan. Does this, uh, since this, this looks like it's a very important program of the DSWD and also well-funded and it has a large budgetary impact, meron naman siguro kayong comprehensive brochure about this program? Sige nga, pag-aralan, wala, pagkailangan po yata to talaga upuan, yes, I've upuan na, opo, Mr. Mr. President. Opo. Yes, tama po si, um, tama po si Minority Leader. Actually, I compelled them to list all the different modalities since there seem to be so many different mm -hmm. forms and shapes of this program. Um, essentially, I believe uh, this has been a uh, uh, work in progress. Every, every, every time there's some kind of an emergency, a program is birthed from the disaster, the epidemic, and uh, all other uh, calamities. Uh, sige po, uh, sige. But since we're talking about the budget, sige, para po na maintindihan po natin. No? The budget for the Office of the Secretary in the committee report, 241.8 billion. Okay, how much of this would be under the Kalahi uh, SIDS program? It's 3.2.9. It's 2.9. Originally 3.82. It's now 2.934 billion. Okay. 2.9 uh, billion pesos of that 241 is uh, for the Kalahi Seeds Program. And this is the 2.9 are uh, the locally generated funds. May, may foreign component pa ito? Voila, that's already our share. Mm -mm. That's the breakdown I uh, read earlier among the different projects like the Pag Abot, Balik Provincia, Cash for Work, etc. That's all locally funded. Loan proceeds to be devoted to Kalahi? Uh, yes. Uh, there's only one loan left. I think that's a 3.7 billion okay. for additional financing of uh, the post COVID loan. And uh, our counterpart and payment is contained in the unprogrammed section. So uh, that's... Yes, how much? How much done? Uh, the loan proceeds is 3... Yes, it's 3.7 billion. Yes, okay. Unprogrammed po ito? Unprogrammed Yes, it's right now in the unprogrammed, although there's a request uh, that it be included in the GAA, given the delays okay. and uh, sometimes the uncertainty of uh, unprogrammed okay. items. If this item in the unprogrammed appropriations in the, to, to the tune of 3.7 billion, should it be released? Okay, may possibility na ma release yun. Oo naman. So, I will add this to the 2.9 billion, so 6.6 .6 billion ang ating budget for Kalai Seeds. Yes, uh, 2.9 uh, plus 3.7. Okay. Pero, uh, of course, the four-piece program, program's budget dwarfs the Kalai Seeds uh, budget. How much is our four-piece program? I think it's upwards of 50% of uh, the budget of uh, the department it's 112 billion 835 million it's now been reduced actually by the senate okay. um, from the original amount it's now 103 billion 953 million okay and actually uh, there have been questions about the reduction because they've been spun out to different uh, uh, projects now, how, how come, how come uh, the, the Itong 4 piece is also a regular program of the DSWD? Yes, that's yeah, the since, largest program. Since, since when? Since 2007, I believe it started out as a pilot project that was ratcheted up as uh, phase 2 and phase 3. 
So it, it started. It's to actually talk. been going on for what is it uh, now? 16 years. 15? <clears throat> yeah. 16, 16 years. Okay. 2007. 2007, okay. Yeah. Kaya na. <clears throat> but if we look at the amounts given to the program, masyadong volatile. Okay, can you explain why the volatility in the amount given to the program? Yeah. I think it's been a constant. It's always been roughly 50% of the DSWD budget. Parang uh, ever since yan na talaga yung amount. Um, over time, it's always 50%. 1.4 million households constantly being uh, serviced. Uh, sorry, 4.4 million households. They're the target households uh, because that's uh, so far what we can afford. The yung, yung answer na it's always 50% of the budget parang all the more naging arbitrary eh. So it's just a formula. Then we set aside the amount for a four-piece program. What I, what I meant when I said volatile. Yes. Volatile. Kasi for yes. example, ngayon sa budget process, Ang amount niya, patalon-talon eh. 112 billion is the pro uh, was the proposal of the House or of the NEP. And then Senate version, 103. We can just discard 9 billion? Ganun lang ba yun? Uh, that's, uh, that's in the Senate version. Uh, being that, uh, in our assessment, uh, at least in the committee, there were quite a few had graduated yeah. or by uh, natural yeah. circumstances became disqualified. Wala na silang minor children. So natanggal na sila sa listahan. And the exit strategy always is pagkatapos na ng four-piece, mag-sustainable livelihood and they can avail of other training programs. Doon ako interesado nga sa graduates eh, kasi if the program which is meant to uh, assist the the poorest of the poor, poorest of the poor, or including including the poor. Ano ba itong programa? I think we have to say it's only the poorest of the poor because our cutoff is always at 4.4 households. When we know for a fact that there are probably more who would qualify, there's a very large waiting list, particularly after the pandemic. Ah, so we look at the households. What is, uh, uh, from the point of view of the DSWD, the Philippines is uh, composed uh, or com com comprised of how many households, Mr. President? Sorry? Well, yes, 4.7 million. Yes. Are, yes. Um, whereas DSWD uh, is only able to service 4.4, the PSA states that there's a 4.7 uh, impoverished household figure. So there's uh, still a significant number um, that uh, await uh, some uh, uh, help. Yes, yes, but. The, 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 if you talk about households, siguro the DSWD has an idea how many total households in the Philippines. Kasama Forbes Park. Oh. Yan ang ah, ko. It's total. Oh. Yeah, total. Ah, no, oh. Because they always deal with the poor. No, 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 I think have... it's upwards of 20, 20 million households. 20 million households. Uh -oh. Pero dun sa 20 million, yung, uh, yung considered poor, and nasa 6 million, ang nasa survey is 4.4. Tama ba? Mali yung sinabi kanina. Mali yung sinabi kanina. Ayan na naman tayo, yung PSA, talagang pinapabalik natin bukas dahil yung pagdating talaga sa, sa, sa statistics, mali-mali tayo. Tama. So what is now the final no, answer? The, yes, uh, so it seems pero, there... Pero Mr. President, ang kawawa si PSA siya ang pinapabalik. <laughs> Tama. Actually, di ba nagka-problema na tayo dyan kasi yung listahanan kung family versus household, tapos yung poverty thresholds, iba-iba rin kasi. Tapos ngayon, nasa CGMP naman tayo, iba na namang listahan yun. So, in any case, apparently there are 20 million households recorded in the Philippines. Mm. 6 million are uh, assumed to be poor. 4.4 million are actually served by the 4Ps program. 
six from the point of view of our policy makers and program designers in the DSWD, six million households are you assume them to be poor? Yes. Ama, yun po that's ko. the finding of the PSA. Well, that's the finding of the PSA. Kalo ko 4.7. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Now, now it turns out it's not PSA to blame. Okay. It turns out it's the DSWD's own listahanan three that says six million are in fact poor out of the twenty. Okay. <clears throat> kaya ako tinatanong yung kasi nag 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 ratio percentaging ako eh. Six, six of twenty, thirty percent, thirty percent, thirty percent households. Yes, I believe ah, so. Okay. Yeah, it's a very large okay. sum. If, if, if we should follow that, then poverty incidents, incidence rates surveys must be in the vicinity of 30%. Is that, is that the admission or the data or of the current administration that the poverty incidence rate right now is 30%? Yes, I uh, think that the poverty level that's uh, officially stated is always 18%. But by these numbers, the minority leader is right. It's upwards of 30 plus percent. So there needs to be a distinction uh, between the two. Yes, I I think it um, it boils down to Listahanan's um, uh, weaknesses, and that's because uh, Listahanan does not assess the entire 20 million, but a mere 15 million. Meti nila pang 5 million eh. And uh, we should also probably consider that Listahanan was uh, finished during the time of COVID, so that the indicators would also... So we could be wasting money actually, giving to uh, households who should not be, who should not have qualified, if that is the reasoning, Mr. President. I think there's a focus in the Listahanan uh, on um, the hunger hotspots, the really poverty-ridden areas, and uh, they don't include the more prosperous regions. And as a result, it's skewed toward poverty, kaya napakataas. Hindi. Even if you're 5 million na hindi nyo sinerve, consider na natin hindi poor, it's still 30%. It's still 30%, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any oh. sense, Mr. President. Because it's still, you still boil down to 4.7 out of 15. So, malaki pa rin eh. This has always been the discussion. Uh, I think there's always been a problem with poverty data, and I'd be the first to say so, because as a governor, I had to disaggregate my own provincial data with great difficulty. Dahil unang-una nga, iba yung household at saka family, tapos yung consideration ng poor, uh, malnourished, and so on, pa iba-iba. So, eto nga. Kawawa kasi Presidente rin, Mr. Presidente. Uh, sa zona niya, he mentions figures eh. Yes, pati 18% yung, pat, pati, nga. Pati, pati unemployment rate. Nakikwestiyon natin, tinanong natin ang doli. Mali-mali din ang mga figures. So, so ito, kung sabihin ng Presidente, poverty incidence rate will be down to 9% at the end of his term. Yun ang sabi. That's but, uh, that's yes. uh, oh, but the that's starting, the goal. The starting point is 22%. If if the DSWD figures are to be believed, mali. It should be 30%. Then how can he bring it down to 9% at the end of his term? Mr. President. So let's help the let's help the administration. We help the president by giving he feeding him correct figures or uh, siguro may, may, may factual basis naman po yung ating mga figures, hindi lang siguro baka desktop or tabletop uh, uh, calculations lang po ito. Actually, I, I appreciate niya the listahanan. Eh. Kaya, sige, ang assumption ko niyan, from the ground, 
Sinuyod nyo po yung... That's correct. Yeah, Kasi yeah, may yeah. mga pangalan yan eh. Oh. Hindi katulad ng uh, PSA na sampling. Nagsasample rin yung listahanan, pero basically, as you huh? said, it's derived from the ground. Then how come the administration does not use the 30% figure of uh, DSWD? The more accurate figure. Kaya yung plano niya sa 2028, by the time the president exits, 9% na lang daw, single digit na daw ang poverty incidence rate. Kawawa naman kung hindi talaga ma-achieve because... He assumed 2018 or 22 percent ng assumption. I'm getting the MTFF assumptions, Mr. President. Yes, I think the idea or the strategy of the DSWD is to saturate the poorest barangays. So, yung more prosperous are excluded in their listing, which probably bloats the poverty number to 30%. percent. The saturation of rural and urban poor. Secretary, with your people, it does not, but that's my point. Even if we assume that the unsurveyed 5 million are all rich, 30% pa rin. Mas masaba nga yung sinasabi nyo na 6 million of the 15 are poor. Ano na yun eh? 30 plus percent, 36 percent, more than 36 percent. Mas malaki talaga ever since yung DSWD working figures for poverty than PSA. Mula sa poll, there's always been that disconnect. And we always questioned it here in the Senate. And the answer has always been that their focus is to saturate the rural and urban poor barangays. Yeah, but the administration which the Secretary is part of, okay? You, the, your success will be measured against your promises. Tandaan nyo, the President promised at the end of his term, single-digit poverty, poverty incidence rate. Ang interpretation ko doon, not more than 9%. Correct. Okay. And of course, may assumption siya, di ba? Saan siya nagumpisa? Di ba? Nung, nung na-turn over sa administration niya, may assumption siya. Ang layo ang sa ang na assumption na it's not in the vicinity of 30%, which is reflected by your figures na sinuyod ninyo from the ground. Ang mas maganda nga yung figures ninyo, mas maniniwala ako sa figures ninyo. Ano ano? Yeah, totoo. Assumption niya. Kasi may pangalan to eh, may, may address. Yeah, from March to yung ending niya, from start. Well, Talagang ever since PSA, mas malaki talaga ang uh, DSWD at uh, mas maniniwala ako sa DSWD with the, all due respect. The, dahil may mga pangalan, may mga address, may kung sino-sino talaga ang nakalistang poor. Yeah, ang, ang tanong ko po, do we see the problem or, or not? Yun lang yung tanong yes. ko eh. I mean, yes, we're with you I mean, in... Uh, in uh, complaining about this uh, moving targets. Even the MTFF will fail, Mr. President, kung mali ang assumptions. I think that's the reason why Listahanan 3 is now going to be folded in the PSA and CBMS data from the ground will be submitted to the PSA once and for all so we can consolidate all accurate data from below rather than uh, uh, projecting or uh, um, sampling and so on. Yung CBMS po, manpower po ninyo? No. Kanina po. This is going to be a combination. It's an existing project of the LGUs. They will be guided and uh, analyzed thereafter by the PSA. Para isahan na lang yung ating data at hindi pa iba-iba yung measure. Kasi actually... Is that list the Hanan used for any other programs yes, of the WSW. Is that is that is that is that important, important for, for AX, for, AX example? for example? But for other programs, even sa other departments, like the lifeline rate ng DRC. Yes, I uh, think the listahanan, of which listahanan 3 is the, is the last. Ano? It's being used for lifeline rates for the ERC and other projects of other departments. In PhilHealth, for example, ginagamit din yan. Sa Unifast, whenever it gets paid by CHED, mm. is also uh, using listahanan 3 as the basis. AX does not. 
AX does not because it's derived largely by uh, the DSWD together with the LGU when emergencies arise. Okay. But you're, 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 you have computerized systems in such a way that uh, a beneficiary, uh, is a beneficiary allowed to, to, ben to accept the, the benefits of more than one program of the DSWD? <coughs> Yes, they are actually. Um, in principle, they should uh, perhaps be called better, but the reality is there are different groups eh, that are uh, being addressed by different programs. So, for example, uh, uh oh. Ito for the information of everybody, uh, especially the DSWD. Kasi in this, in this, the. Uh, Ah, sorry. The secretary is a member of the official family para ma-discuss nyo po ito sa, sa taas sa cabinet. That's correct. In your, in your MTFF, the assumption, 2021, poverty rate is 18.1. Okay. Kaya malakas ang loob ng economic planners, the official family, and of, of the president to commit that at the end of his term, 9% ang poverty rate. So, okay? So just... Uh, ano po, input, input na lang po natin yan sa planning po ninyo kasi Pero it's the same <clears throat> It's the same, it's still way off okay, Ito, at least we're, we're talking to the President's yeah. sister so, and <laughs> I don't know so, that, uh, Madam, if that oh, helps the Madam, okay But not, I think uh, uh, there's a great hope pinned on the CBMS actually consolidating data once and for all dahil uh, as we know, yung PSA naman very undermanded and uh, the 2020 uh, census, as a matter of fact, was finished very late dahil nga sa COVID. So talaga may problema lahat ng datos natin. Kami po minority sa Senate. Hindi kami aligned with the administration. Okay? Sabi ko, ang pantawag namin, we are critical cooperators. We want, we want the administration to succeed. Okay? Kasi ang success naman niya, success ng bansa eh. Okay? Tama. Pero, tingnan niyo naman yung mga pangako tuloy ng Presidente, who is the brother of our sponsor na I hope umabot <laughs> on a Sunday uh, lunch meeting sa kanya. Okay? 20 pesos per kilo rice. Rice. Oh, Siyempre, binase niya yun on something. But if it was fed uh, garbage in, garbage out, Okay, ang plano sa energy, to, bago daw siya matapos ang kanyang termino, total household electrification. Sa hearing natin, magkano budget? 70 billion. 70. Saan ang manggagaling? Di pa namin alam. O oh, uh, official development assistant. Sa housing. Housing. Ah, 6 million units, homes. Binabala sa 3 million. At the end of my term. One million a year. E one year running more than one year now. Wala pa eh. Na actual term. So inadjust na. Inadjust na lang. Six million housing units to be launched. Oh. I mean, and then, and then the poverty incidence rate. Uh, no, I share, uh, I share the minority leader's frustration. And, uh, uh, and I do not know the president very well, but I know he's... He, he has interest in mathematics. Yes. Okay. Alam ko yan. Alam, si, alam ni ate siguro yan. Okay. He's a He's math and physics mathematics. major okay. po. Math and physics. Okay. Yes po. Okay. And then, he, so he always mentions governance being science-based. Okay. Science-based. Pag malima, science-based means you analyze the data, make your conclusions, but the data are researched. By Maglasi, this is theoretical and, of course, the uh, on the ground research. So, siguro, uh, it's time for uh, this administration to shape up in the first step. Let's have accurate data, collect, collect accurate data so that the scientific based decision making process of this administration will really be uh, effective and uh, based on realities on the ground, Mr. President. Yes, uh, I think uh, we all share your frustration, and that is why Listahan and Three will now be folded. PSA hopefully is strengthened and uh, fed through the CBMS uh, system, and that way we get a more coherent picture.
in the Philippines. When the sponsor says, Mr. President, listahan ng three will be folded, ano yung siperang abandon na? Dis discarded oh, na? What is it? When, kasi it, when sa, is it folded? Sa, folded means? Kasi yung listahan ng three is going to be the last one. Uh, ayon sa batas, siya na yung huli. Oh. Uh, matapos yun, PSA na at uh, yung ibang uh, authorities ang magbibigay ng datos. So, ah, uh, so, so, Yeah. PSA has in its budget now uh, the funding problem, the funding for the groundwork necessary for to well, create another ang meron list. yung CBMS kasi uh, ayon sa CBMS law mag-umpisa na yung CBMS uh, to gather uh, with 679 LGUs and the LGUs have funded it so uh, we are hoping that with CBMS, CBMS the data quality is improved and then CBMS ang resulta nun is a list also. It's a list. It's a list also. List ang, ang resulta ng CBMS effort. It's also a list. Yes, I think it will be a more detailed list with actual names and addresses similar to uh, listahanan with hunger incidents, housing conditions, and so on, fed through the PSA uh, modules. And then all the departments will have a uniform set of